Would anyone be around someone that is condescending? I mean, someone that just, you know, looks down on you. Like they're superior to you. You know, it's not about, well, I'm more talented than you. And there's some people that are either talented or more knowledgeable in certain uh, areas. And that's fine. But, you know, to look down on somebody just feels like, you know, um, I don't know if it stands for, uh, you know, they know they're inferior. You know, they want to look down on you just to put you down or something like that. It could be a lot of things. You know, maybe they just want to just want to hurt your feelings. You know, maybe they, you know, uh, uh, they feel uh, you uh, you disrespected them or you hurt them, even if you didn't mean to, you know, and they just, they just they're just a very hateful person or something like that. But the condescending thing, uh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a, there was a joke in fifth grade, uh, when I was in fifth grade, and uh, I think, you know, my teacher, his name was Mr. Jessica, he, uh, he understood that, I mean, you know, it was, it was a big word for a fifth grade, we didn't, I don't, we didn't use that in, in fifth grade, you know, uh, honestly, uh, in reality, I used to read the dictionary, I used to check out words in the dictionaries from time to time, but I think I got it from Seinfeld, you know, because I used to watch Seinfeld was like when I was a kid. But anyway, uh, um, the, I, I'm, I'm going to get into the whole kind of sending thing, kind of explain it a little bit. Uh, the inner workings of somebody that's just, you know, that mean to you and, uh, you know, puts you down, uh, you know, and uh, they honestly, you know, they just, they don't even, I don't think they even mean it. That's the thing, you know. And uh, not, they don't mean what, what 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 they're trying to say, or they don't they don't f even feel like you, you know you are that. But anyway, the joke is we had to write. Um, I slipped my mind, but I think it was something about New Year's, you know. And was it condescending? The ending was well. The ending was I just I be, I was condescending, you know. Uh, you know, I guess that's ironic in a way, or is that, uh, hmm, most for words, you know, if I write this stuff down, so my videos aren't edited, this is a, you know, a vlog kind of video, you know, I like, I like these a little bit more, it's like I write it down, edit it and that, uh, I didn't prepare for this, I just went on a whim because I was doing dishes and stuff, and a memory popped in my mind when, uh, a girl, her name was Marissa, you know, she worked at Pipe Pipers, this bar. Uh, she was just very condescending about, like, uh, Latin, Latin food, South American food, uh, specifically, you know. I didn't try every, uh, dish in the South American, uh, kitchen, right? But, uh, there was one, were too particular, and I just, uh, I think it was Colombian food, and I was just too, I wasn't too big on it, you know. I tried from, uh, food from Honduras, not everything but one or two of the things. Maybe it's the way you prepare it, or maybe it was something else. You know, I just, I wasn't too big on it. And I, I knew I liked Cuban. You know, I never tried uh, Haitian food. I really want to try that, but, uh, she, she was just very condescending. She, she said, you know, you should just expand your horizons. And then she, like, kind of had a smile on her face, a smirk. You know, it's kind of like, oh, like, I never really, you know, I'm, I'm narrow in my in my lifestyle. I would never try that. No, I'm just gonna stick with stick with my, you know, for lack of a better word, my pierogies and my sauerkraut or something like that. Obviously, she probably, she probably wouldn't have been gone to make that joke. You know, I don't think she would have been that well equipped uh, with wordplay just to you know make fun of me. But it's the way she said it. You know, I experienced that a lot of times in my life, especially my my ex boss Janusz Kowalski. He was he was kind of sent to a, to a high degree, you know. Like uh, you know that's one of that uh, emotional or like you know psychological control on somebody, you know, because it makes you think. It also you know creates a form of aggression, you know. I, I didn't say anything about that to her, you know. I just like surprised she even said that. And part of me thought, well, well you know, I never tried food from Chile or Ecuador. Maybe one thing. How about Brazil? You know, this, I was like, what the hell is she been talking about? You know, he just kind of, like, if I was just really fast snappy like that, you know, I probably would have said something to her. It would have been all, all negative. You know, I just, you know, I'm really, uh, I'm getting tired of saying I don't have that in my life. You know, but I'm not trying to be superior than nobody, you know. 
don't aren't we don't we have a like a built-in ego or something you know when you're trying to like progress trying to learn something new especially do it better than the other person or just you know catch up or see their technique you know and not just in writing how about welding or sculpting yeah or um how about uh, woodworking obviously you can't call that sculpting but you know you could woodwork take a piece of uh, of wood like a bark and you could sc sculpt something out of it i've seen that or well, other kind of woodworking you know i'm not saying i want to have a construction company and put the nicest molding this and that crown molding top molding you know do that and like a uh, wooden stairs that'd be great you know uh but the thing is you know it's uh, it's somebody else's house and you get paid and there's nothing wrong with that if it's a job and you're good at it that's great I'm um, talking about other kind of woodworking, you know, and I've seen that there's people in the United States that do that pretty well all over the world, you know. They can do a lot of stuff with tree bars and branches and all sorts of things, you know, thick and all sorts of colors. But my, my point is, you know, I'm not trying to be like, well, I want to do better than that and that. I just have different ideas. Sometimes I don't know if I can do it. I'm just learning it, you know. Well, you know, to, to, to just put somebody down and stuff. And, you know, it, it is like, you know, it is, it is a feeling like it, it just overused word lady for me is hateful, you know, very spiteful. Like you just, you know, uh, you want to bring somebody down to your level or below, you know, it is a form of insecurity. And, uh, I might, I might be, I mean, I'm, in my belief, you know, and, um, I mean, I don't know, that's it. Uh, as far as that joke goes, you know, um, hmm. there's something like, uh, I will tell you the definition of kind of setting, but I know you're not going to get it. Something like that. <laughs> and, and, you know, it was, it was very, it was much more well worded and was written down, you know. Uh, I mean, I always thought, well, you could probably do that with a lot of things in life, you know, uh, and not the word kind of sending, but that type of, uh, of humor. But, you know, uh, it is what it is, you know, it's just a joke. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that will either challenge you or find something you don't know and try to like, put you down. Like, you didn't know that? That? And it's like, they'll, they'll, they'll get, like, agitated. They, they don't know how to be condescending. <laughs> to the point that it will, it will get you aggravated. Because a lot of people did stuff to me. I'm not gonna mention any names, but you know, it was just like it just showed anger and stuff. I'm just like, why are you even that angry towards me? You know, especially with that or something minuscule, a little detail. I couldn't understand it, you know, but it it did create a lot of aggression in me. You know, very much aggression more than 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 that, that girl because to me, uh, she was a bit immature. She would make these faces like, oh, I, I have to work like a more hour. So I can't even do it. I have to like be pre in her presence, you know. He's very uh, like childish face, like a child, but like, like that. It's it's fake or something. Another girl named Lisa Whitey used to do that. I thought you better stop. Like that's some four or five year old stuff. Do you really mean that? Don't do that to me. Do that next to me. Like, okay, I won't. And I just stop talking to her. I told her she knew I, I couldn't do it anymore. I didn't want to get angry. I want to see that. And it's very weird. Like, uh, you, you know, twenties and thirties, you're a grown woman, and you do that. I could not understand that. I rationalized it as, you know, that that kind of uh, behavior. It's like a, uh, it's undergrown person, not just immature, but like uh, underdeveloped. And I'm talking about physically, just like mentally, you know, like uh, I get it. She was trying to do that to evoke some kind of emotion in me. You know, like, oh, she's really sad, you know, but I felt like, oh, okay, yeah, I just, yeah, I really felt creeped out, I really did, you know, it was just very weird, it reminded me of, of, of that girl, Lisa, that I talked to, talk to in a couple of years, and I was like, wow, I thought she, that girl was the only one, except, you know, the bartender, Marissa, just did it once or twice, she didn't do it as often, but who knows if she does it, he does that often in her life, like, I just, you know, that's too weird, too creepy, too disgusting, you know, and I don't declare myself superior to that. I just, uh, I don't need that in my life. 
Um, you know, it's like, like how far do you go having people in your life, whether, uh, even females you're attracted to, and like, oh, she's nice sad, but then it's like, you know, either she is, uh, let me see, too arrogant in some way, doesn't have a personality, isn't too open in public to just, you know, not just flirt, but have a conversation, not just have a perfect smile, but actually to be uh, delighted around people that will talk to her and just will be maybe somewhat quick-witted, not quick-witted, but will say something, will joke with a stranger or, you know, have any good relationship with someone that wants to with her, you know. And there's males like that too, you know. Uh, not a romantic relationship on my part, but, uh, you know, not a physical either, just, you know, uh, conversing this and that with respect, even if we don't see eye to eye, at least we can learn from one another. You know, it's it just, it, it's, it's to the point where, like, there's people that just really don't want you to uh, have anything nice. At least in my part, that's what I felt, you know. Uh, it, it's, not, uh, it's not a racial thing or a cultural thing. Although I found there were uh, restaurants, well, all different cultures that just didn't want me to go in there and buy something. Especially if I looked it up on the phone or I... You know, I would, I would, I would know what it is. It's like they hated the fact that I was there. They wouldn't provide me service, excluding, uh, I mean, including but excluding. You know, the 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 Arabic guy, right? Who I went into and he said I was trying to steal his ice cream. He called the cops on me. I mean, that was even worse. I wonder if they would do the same thing. You know, it's like what level of just disdain and. Uh, do people have, you know, if you work in a store, even if you don't like somebody, I never went in to aggravate to anybody and personally just talk to them. You know, it was like a, what was an India store and they had dates, like the actual dates. I had never seen them before in my life, you know. So I was interested. I was going to purchase it and she just looked at, the lady was looking at me, yes. And another, like a lady came out, I don't know if she was Indian and I think she was a white woman. She actually talked to her. She didn't talk to me. So I just said, ah, you know what, I don't need this. I need this stuff. I think I went somewhere else and I bought them. You know, they weren't as authentic from India as she had them. I think I don't know what uh what a region of the world they were from, but I bought them uh, anyway from somewhere else. They're they're everywhere, you know. But point is, you know. Uh, if I feel your negativity, I just won't say anything to you right now. I won't let it get to me. Yeah. Even if you can't understand that if you, you know, you work in a supermarket and register and you get my items, I'm not going to start bagging it because we have our own, you have to have your own bags right now, right? Let's say even if I have the money covered or money on my EBT, I'm not going to start bagging it. I just want to clear the transaction and then put it in a bag. And, and then, you know, there's this one supermarket, this lady, and it just, it got me so aggravated, but I just, I didn't even say anything. I just, you know, I was like, oh, this is just so ridiculous. She puts my stuff, I have a lot, and I'm trying to bag it, I pay for it, and then she gets the other late person stuff, they have like this much room, and it's like pushes onto my stuff. And before that, my stuff, she just knocked it over and fell. You know, just like, it's like, you know, why don't you just break it? First of all, like, I'm in the process of, of paying it. What if I just say, no, nah, I don't want it, take it back. Or, you know what, why don't you go there and pick me something new? Oh, you know, hold on. I'll get it myself because, you know, I don't want to be rude. Hold on right here. I'm just going to get it. I don't want that because you knocked it off. I don't know. Maybe you broke it. I don't know. Would that be decent? Or another supermarket where they just don't put price tags. If I just go there and start going back and forth with every item, what do they know? Do they care? Whether they think I'm crazy? Or am I a carajo? Right? Because I want things to be efficient. Right? So it works smoother. So you will knock uh, the other person's food after, you know, you rent, you scan her into mine, you know, and I, I'm, I'm cramped up. I'm like, you know, trying to hurry up. I'm feeling nervous and anxious. And I look at her face. She's not even bothered. You know, it's like she's insulted that uh, or something. Or she's just like plainly in, incoherent to what I'm doing. I guess what I'm trying to say, uh, those sur service kit registers come in real handy. Yeah, but even those malfunction sometimes. And I gotta call somebody, but but it's just fine.
you know, it's just, I hope the rest of the world is not like that. But from a logical step, standpoint, it probably is. It probably is. But if you look at the suicide rates in the United States, they're very high. Gun violence is very high. It's been for years. Yeah, and illiteracy. Like, how many people can actually read? Because people in the internet chat rooms, and, you know, they say stuff, they misspell stuff all the time. They, don't, they can't even have uh, the concept uh, to, fi to fix it, you know? And to actually read something out loud, I'm still not that fluent. I make mistakes. I'm in hiccups. I experienced, uh, like, a little mighty stroke a couple years ago. And even before that, how many times are I actually practicing reading something out loud, you know? Like, we say we read, we read, we, we think about it. It's a little bit easier, you know, even though you mess up words, you got to look it up. But reading it out loud, you know, using, um, uh, I believe it's the auditory uh, senses system or whatever, right? It's much more different, especially when you got to concentrate and you got to, you know, pronounce everything properly, let alone uh, record something, uh, singing or rapping, you know, it's, it's a little bit much more difficult. Point is, there's people probably, probably can sing, but, you know, the reading and just grasping words and understanding it, in context and you know um having a thought deriving a conclusion from that it's just you know it i think it should be you know common sense you know or at least common practice for uh you know uh, minors and eventually adults for everybody that pit first picks up a book you know it is difficult at first i i mean i think it might be stressful i don't remember but it has to be right because you have to learn the letters the sounds i learned it three times Polish, Spanish, and English. You know, Spanish is an easier language to pronounce. Uh, they had uh, it's, it's a little different system as far as adjectives and nouns. You know, uh, the conjugation. Yeah, you have to. It's actually much more difficult than than English. The conjugation part, pronunciation, Spanish is, is easier. And it's actually, in my opinion, uh, it is it is much more beautiful uh, if you want to say that. You know, but. There's differences. There's differences in these languages. Yeah. And it is frightening to a, to a child when you walk in a new school. Not only do you don't know anybody, but you don't know the language. So when I came to the States, there were people that, that spoke Spanish, you know. And I was relieved. One of them was a Puerto Rican guy, Hector. Yeah, there's another Latino. He was Dominican. So next, we didn't talk too much. But, you know, I was like, oh, right, finally, I got to speak. You know, I could, you know, I, someone speaks Espanol, but... Then, you know, it was evident, like, you know, you shouldn't be talking Spanish to him. He has to learn English. Until I went to summer school. And that's when I, I think I picked up the dictionary and I figured out the sounds. Uh, you know, the teacher told me, don't worry about that. It'll come to you. But, you know, even if I would have learned, I don't know. I, the English language is just too, too mixed up for me. I still got to, you know, maybe uh, relearn that. But, you know, I'm, I'm at a different level right now. But in the summer school uh, in Elizabeth, that's, you know, after third grade, the summer school, that's when I learned English really well. I started watching cartoons and stuff. But I'll never put it on anybody. Oh, no, and I also took ESL, English as a Second Language, in my fourth grade. I think third grade, too. It did help. But, you know, uh, the thing is, like, I, I'm not saying that, you know, like, if I had it my way and you was here in the States, let's say I was a mayor, governor, some kind of uh, form of council, I would say to yeah, well, you know what, you have to learn how to read and write. Someone pointed out to me that she was with an illiterate, and what if he can't read medicines? And my reasoning was, well, you know, uh, they're probably, you know, more difficult. You know, perfect, find out how to pray, all that stuff. But, and then what about the dosage? Right, what if you mix up numbers and you just, you don't understand the difference between uh, a milligram or a gram. What do you have no concept of that? And what if, I mean, there are labels. You put a green label on that and you know which one it is. And then, you know, make a chart, uh, you know, defining it. You can't read it right. You can't make a chart unless somebody else does it for you. What about somebody that just messes with you and gives you the wrong chart? No, it probably won't happen, but, you know, it, it reading is really important. So is writing. And understanding it. And I'm not being condescending. You know, this is just uh, pure honesty. 